Hello and welcome to another episode of FAQ Mondays, episode 317. If you would like to support this channel further, check the links down below in the description. Got courses, free downloads for patches and all sorts of stuff. And you can also submit a question while you're down there. Without further ado, let's jump into it, shall we? How does Drag Dunder approach a track list from an album versus a set list for a concert? That's a good question. Uh, for an album, honestly, it's a lot of back and forth. Uh, thematically, um, you know, what song is the... <coughs> Excuse me. Topo Chico, everybody. Not sponsored, but it should be. Um, thematically, uh, what key is the song in? How does it flow? What is the energy like? Um, typically on an album, you will pick the order that you want and then the record label will go, nope. And then they'll do something called front loading or back loading. Front loading is putting all the bangers in the first half of the song, uh, first half of the album. Uh, back loading is putting all the bangers in the back half of the album. Typically most albums are front loaded. Um, but as far as our live set goes on a given tour, we actually go by the Spotify numbers. We go by the top most streamed songs, not in that city. We don't we don't Metallica it because Metallica will get to their city and then they will look up the top most listened songs in that city to make the set list. We don't do that. We just go by, you know, overall, what are the most popular songs that are being streamed of ours? And that's basically how we build our set, um, which seems it's not totally accurate. For example, we don't like playing Crooked Halos live because it's so mid-tempo and the audience generally is falling asleep while we're playing it. Even though it's like one of our top five most streamed songs, people don't like it live. It just doesn't go over live in comparison to a highly energetic song like Hypochondria or Suffer or Upright Animals and stuff like that. So um, yeah, generally speaking, we go by the Spotify numbers to choose our live set. Is the quality of a DI affected by the audio interface we own? In other words, the more expensive the audio interface we have, the better DI tracks we get? Why? All of this assuming we have a properly equipped guitar and the performing was stunning. Um, yes. Yes, to a point. So audio converters are a funny thing and you're only gonna hear the difference in converters if the rest of your pipeline is dialed, right? But you know, is there a difference in conversion with a $200 focus right versus a $1,000 universal audio interface? Me? Well, huh, actually, it could be argued that at this present moment right now, like some of the, uh, the Personas Quantum stuff have better conversion than a lot of the universal audio Apollo stuff. They're in universal audio Apollo converters sound very dirty to my ears, whereas the Personas, the newest Personas Quantum stuff are really pristine sounding, but that's just a generational thing. But generally speaking, if you have two different uh, interfaces and there's like a $200 difference between them, no, you're not gonna hear a difference in converters, no. Um, in order to hear the difference of converters, you gotta get a pretty expensive interface. You also have to have uh, the monitoring to hear that conversion. So it's all relative, but you know, if you're thinking about getting, you know, ditching your, your focus, right? Two I four for, you know, uh, that, that desktop audio and, you know, Avid M box or something like that. And that's probably not going to get you where you want to go. Just use a good DI is what I would do. And don't, don't get, don't get too hung up on conversion. That's, Converters are, are very, very good nowadays. Would you ever consider at one point in your life starting your own guitar or pedal company? Call in RBG Guitars. I would never, ever, ever start my own guitar company because I couldn't deal with the people uh, wanting to return their guitars for it being dusty or for just not liking the color or you know all that stuff that comes with guitars. They're a large physical object and the logistics for moving large physical objects anywhere in the world nowadays is insane, financially speaking. I would never ever, you could not pay me to run a guitar company. I would dive into a, a pedal company though. I think that would be 
loads of fun. And yes, I know that's another physical object, but that is a dramatically smaller object than, than a guitar. <laughs> but yeah, a, a pedal company? For sure I would do that. I mean, yeah, I'd do a pedal company. Not a guitar company though, no way. Do you have a favorite tone you aim for when using different amps or try for different tones with different amps? Uh, generally speaking, if I am dialing in an amplifier, I am either doing it for the first time, and if so, I'm trying to see what that amplifier can do. If it's not the first time, if I'm familiar with the amplifier, I would choose an amplifier for the tones that it offers. I'm not gonna try to get a Friedman to sound like a Recto or a Recto to sound like a Friedman because they don't do those things. Um, I try to find the strengths in that particular amplifier. That's why I have so many amplifiers because they all do different things. My Mesa Boogie Mark IV does not do what my PV5150 does and vice versa. So to that extent, I will generally just try to bring the best out of that amplifier, whatever it may do, if that makes sense. Favorite fat records bands, favorite epitaph bands. Oh, um, fat records bands. My favorite fat records bands, Good Riddance, uh, Lag Wagon, Strung Out, um, you know, Propagandi, um, Get Dead. Those are really good. No use for a name. I mean, if if they put out a record in the 90s on Fat Rec, that's one of the bands. As far as epitaph bands go, Bad Religion, obviously. Uh, Architects. Um, Pennywise. Um, Bring Me the Horizon. That's all that comes to mind currently, but there's a lot more, I promise. Oh, H2O, Enzin, Straight Faced. Um, yeah, those are the ones I can think of currently, but if they were signed to Epitaph in the 90s, that's one of the bands. <laughs> Blanket answer, sorry. Intonation, how often? Mm, I mean, every time I do a string change, I'm checking that, that kind of thing. I am checking, when I'm on tour, I am checking neck straightness every time I take the guitar out of its boat. So intonation starts at a properly set up guitar, straight neck, et cetera, et cetera. Generally speaking for my tour guitars, I'll check it before tour, make sure it's all right. It's generally not gonna move that much at all anyway, but when I'm at home, I'll just, uh, I'll check intonation every string change just because I have it on the bench. Why not? Um, but yeah, if once you get it set up, it's it, a guitar is generally good to go barring any extreme circumstances for, for quite a while. Is there still a chance to become a successful guitar content creator on YouTube these days? Yeah. I mean, you know, look at guys like, you know, um, Agufish or, or Kyle Bowl. Kyle Bowl wasn't even around two or three years ago like in the sense of like making regular videos like he is right now and he's crushing it he's he just passed i think twenty thousand subs as the filming of this video um i don't know what you mean by successful i mean you could be it could be argued that i am not a successful youtuber either the youtube thing is a resume builder it is a calling card It is a visual calling card to do other cool stuff really i mean Yes, the market is flooded. I know the spirit of your question is referencing that and it's very, very crowded, but you know, there's always room on the top shelf for the best. It doesn't matter how new you are. If you're offering something cool or doing something cool, I think there's always room and there's always viewers available to watch your stuff. Even if it's not in the guitar space, even if it's food or photography or, or whatever it is, there's always room at the top for the best baby. So if you're good, You'll be around. Question nine comes from Mr. Shred I Night over on the Discord server, link down below in the description if you'd like to come on over and hang out over on Discord. And Shred I Night's question is, which method of releasing music is best for starting bands? Albums, EPs, singles, thank you. Um, Honestly, I would say singles, follow the hip hop game. Uh, if you're new, you want people to easily digest whatever you're putting out, and that is not an album or EP. I would just put out single after single after single after single. Um, you know, dragged under ramp with singles for a year before we put out our first record. 
So, you know, that's, uh, I think that says a lot about the state of music as a whole. I prefer listening to entire albums, but the album form is not what it used to be in, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s. So I would put out singles. I would highly advise you to put out singles and accompanying music videos and content, which each of those songs, I mean, you wanna be putting out a single, you know, every three, four months, five months, maybe. Um, that's a pretty good clip of putting out, putting out music, but that's staying fresh, staying relevant. And, uh, you know, your fans just always have something to consume from you. So yeah, go the single route. If you could only reamp with one amp, one mic, and one speaker forever, what would it be? Extra credit for excluding a 5150, an SM57, and a V30. All right, I'm always an extra credit kind of kid. I would have my... I feel like I could do just about anything with my Friedman JJ or, or my Mizuboogie JP2C microphone i would use a neumann u87 microphone and i would have celestian creambacks for the speakers i could do just about anything with that setup i'd have my clean tones my crunch tones and my lead tones on one amp i would have a great microphone that i could make sound however i wanted to sound and i would have a nice smooth but aggressive cream back Boom, don't at me. And last but not least, we have another question from my Discord server link down below in the description. If you wanna come hang out on Discord, Lux Ulthran asks, when mixing a song, what do you feel is the most important thing that most people overlook or undervalue? A couple of things. I find myself getting too guitar guy about a mix. Um, I, and I think a lot of mix engineers are, are players as well, so I will, either make the guitars too loud or aggressive. I will also, you know, the point of a song, the first and most important thing about a song is the vocal. That's what people are gonna connect to. People aren't gonna listen to the guitar track. The vocal needs to be in your face. The vocal needs to sound good and be present. Um, and second, I think the, a lot of mix engineers, younger mix engineers will default do mix moves just because that's what they're used to. They're gonna put this compressor on this two bus or they're gonna put this compressor on this or do this EQ move on the guitars without actually having to listen of what the mix needs. Stopping, zooming out, what does this need? I'm, I'm listening to this right now, what does it need? Is the snare too loud? Well, yeah, but I got my one shot on it or I got my, my SSL plugin on it. Well, does it need that though? I know you wanna use the new cool tool does it need it? That's a hard mindset to get into when we're trained to, oh, if you wanna make your guitar sound sick, do this high shelf and low shelf at these free, go by what it needs. Don't listen to anything else, just go by what the mix needs or what the part needs or what the vocal needs or what the, the bass part needs, what the kick needs in relation to the bass, all that stuff. So it's just asking yourself, these questions, I don't think enough people do that when mixing these days, in my opinion. However, my opinion doesn't really matter in the context of anyone else's mixes but mine. And with that, we conclude another episode of FAQ Mondays. Thank you so much for watching. Links down below in the description. You've been wonderful. I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.